since the 1960s in particular, we've blown off the barriers between men and women in terms of general participation in society, right? And so we've decided that all things considered, spaces isolated to a given sex are suboptimal, right? We, the schools are co-ed, the, like the, the public schools, the universities are co-ed, all business enterprises are co-ed, so to speak. And then, of course, so that, that raises the question, well, should any domains be left sex segregated? Um, if so, how do you walk the fine line between sex segregation for the purpose of facilitating development and sex segregation that turns into prejudice and um, and oppression, right? Just rejection on the basis of sex. And then also the thorny question of, well, if most enterprises should be completely open to both sexes, which enterprises should be protected? Do you have any, obviously you believe that athletic performance, athletic competition per se, should be one of those protected categories. But do you have any sense of how we as a society should draw the line? It's like, are there spaces that should be male only? Like one of the things I really wonder about, for example, I talked to Tulsi Gabbard about this a while back, is like, it isn't obvious to me at all that our society would benefit by having women in frontline combat. Right. Like, and I, it isn't that I can generate an immediate coherent argument for why I believe that. There's something about it that strikes me more deeply and emotionally, I suppose, that that just, there's something preposterous about that. Maybe it's partly because, look, it isn't obvious to me that professional frontline combat, that's pretty damn hard on anyone. That's even really hard on extremely well put together and extraordinarily strong and brave men. And so to also presume that that's going to be open to women just seems to me to be taking the whole bloody charade too far. Now, you know, you could say, well, that I'm old-fashioned and prejudiced, although I don't actually think I'm either. But, you know, it is a thorny question, right? It's like, well, if men and women are equal, then why should there ever be sex-segregated spaces of any sort? And we're certainly seeing, seeing that on the bathroom front. We're seeing that on the change room front. We're seeing that on the athletic front. So what do you... Where do you think that the line should be drawn so that there are female spaces and male spaces and that those are protected? And how do you think we manage that, like, legally and conceptually? I think where any place where either of the sexes is vulnerable, whether that be in regards to privacy, in regards to safety, in regards to um, anything that relies on your physiology, because, of course, men and women are physiologically different, um, I think that's where that sex protection-based rights are important. So prisons, that's an area where women specifically are vulnerable. Um, of course, shelters, again, bathrooms, locker rooms. Um, no woman should be subjected to having a male in that space. Um, so I think it's it's areas where sex so, is so, important. So, okay, so it's, okay, so it's something like, there's a subset of areas where the fact of the biological difference between men and women becomes paramount. Correct. Right? And so those would be, well, in change rooms is a really good example of that. But you extended that also to, say, women's shelters and prisons and so forth. So it's there's, there's something there that's sort of, what would you say, it's reminiscent of the idea of nakedness, I suppose, because you mentioned vulnerability, right? So right. when you're stripped down to your most vulnerable that's when the segregation is most necessary. It's something like that, right? I believe— It seems that way. Yeah, I believe there's there's value in understanding that. Um, I, I truthfully think anywhere where sex is relevant, um, there are certain places— um, let's, let's consider the, the workplace. There are certain places where sex isn't necessarily relevant. There are certain places where it are. I like how you mentioned military. That's a very good point. Um, men and women, there are differences there that would, again, make anything that requires sheer strength 
make men be advantageous and make that more um, achievable. That's that's what we're wanting, right? We want to be this powerhouse. We want men at the forefront. So I think where sex plays a role, that's where we kind of have to draw that line. Whether you're feeling stressed, anxious, or simply seeking a moment of peace and tranquility, the Hallow app has something for you. Hallow offers an incredible range of guided meditations and prayers that are designed to help you deepen your spirituality and strengthen your connection to God. With Hallow, you can explore different themes and types of prayer and meditation, such as gratitude, forgiveness, and centering prayer. You can also choose from different lengths of meditation to fit your schedule, whether you have a few minutes or an hour. With its user-friendly interface and hundreds of guided meditations, the Hallow app has quickly become a go-to resource for people seeking spiritual growth and healing. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Jordan. You can set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Hallow is truly transformative and will help you connect with your faith on a deeper level. So what are you waiting for? Download the Hallow app today at hallow.com slash Jordan. That's hallow.com slash Jordan. Once again, it's hallow.com slash Jordan for an exclusive three-month free trial of all 6,000 plus prayers and meditations. So it would be where the biological differences are germane, number one, to performance, like specifically germane to performance, but also number two, specifically germane to differential vulnerability. So anywhere where women are sexually vulnerable or anywhere where the physical differences in performance actually have a substantive effect on the 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 performance itself. So, well, so here's an example. I mean, there's no evidence that men and different men and women differ in IQ. There are micro differences in IQ, and some of them are arguably important in some micro domains. But overall, the evidence is quite clear that on average, men and women have the same level of intelligence. And so then we might presume that in any domain where intelligence is the fundamental marker of potential merit, there should be no sex segregation. But if we're, if we're looking at something like, let's say, um, military re- battlefield rescue, that might be a good one, where physical strength and, in, and becomes a paramount marker of the actual ability to do the job, then sex-based discrimination starts to become appropriate and morally required. And then you could make the reverse case, which is, well, where women are particularly vulnerable on the sexual front, so that would be in, in locker rooms, for example, that's also a place where sex segregation is is reasonable. It's So those are the basic rules, something like that. Not just is it appropriate and, and morally responsible, it's beneficial. Um, it's something that is good for the greater good of society in general. Um, So, yeah, I agree. 